Greetings, most delicious spirit, and welcome to your Libra New Moon transmission from Edible Spirit. Remembering that we offer you these transmissions so that you can get a sampler platter, a little poo poo platter, of all of the astrological influences that are on offer, or the most potent ones, uh, so that you can decide what you want to work with during this lunar cycle or not. Don't work with it if you don't want to. Uh, live your life. You know, but uh, if you do want to set some intentions uh, for how you're going to work with the energies in you and around you this month, new moon's a great time to do it because the uh, sun and the moon are in a new sign, ostensibly. Um, and uh, they sort of cancel each other's energies out and create this beautiful, fertile seeding, planting ground for you to set some new intentions, work with them throughout the month, and grow them. So... Um, yeah, Libra New Moon is a marvelous time to pause and think, because Libra is an air sign, about balance and fairness and justice um, and what is in balance for you in your life, what's not in balance for you, what's out of balance in the world around you. Um, we'll talk about Mars in a moment, how you want to adjust that or work with that. Um, imbalance around you or within you, uh, now is the best time to set intentions to create harmony, uh, uh, fairness, equanimity, diplomacy, balance. Um, we're, we're sort of reading it as like, it's not, there's also Mercury retrograde in Libra, also we'll talk about that in just a moment, that, that's giving us this very sort of narrow path that... Um, isn't really that hard to keep it's just narrow it's like a a clean line that you can sort of cut through this moment if you're always looking for harmony balance fairness what's in balance what's out of balance what is harmonious what is not harmonious um uh libra is connected to venus so it's also about beautification glory deliciousness so you can even ask questions about like what do i want to beautify this month what do i want to um harmonize but again harmony like creating harmony implies sort of a, a something that you then want to create a beautiful resonance and harmoniousness with so that's why we say to you like what is discordant in your life right now what is inharmonious and in the world around you that you want to that you intend to create balance in or with or around so you know if you know your chart um seek out what house libra is in your chart and that'll tell you the area of your life that all of this thinking and and sort of processing and um yeah refining and and harmonizing and working with and cultivating um that's the area of your life that this will be sort of spiciest in okay um but I want to talk about a few of these little, uh, da, 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 yeah, creating beauty, harmony, some questions for this. Where can I bring more balance, fairness, diplomacy to my life? Where is the fire? And how can I cool it off through direct, thoughtful interaction? Because Libra is the sign of relationships and, you know, not communication, but really speaking and listening, whereas Gemini is a little more like speaking. <laughs> um, Libras are better listeners than Gemini's. I have a lot of Gemini's in my life. Um, where am I being less than direct? It's a great, uh, great question to ask right now. And where could I apply clear, direct communication and cooperation in order to cultivate balance and harmony and beauty in my life? Um, <clears throat> yes, so we'll talk about a few um, astrological alignments, but really everything is feeding into the same vibe. Um, we have a uh, new moon is conjunct Mars also in Libra. So uh, this tells us that whatever intentions you have to create beauty, harmony, uh, uh, fairness, balance, diplomacy around you, whatever intentions you have and whatever intentions you set will be activated, amplified, driven ahead, full steam ahead, right, by Mars energy. So it's also like, I like to think about Mars as sort of like the um, the blaster, you know, the engine. So, you know, l use your Libra moment and the new moon to really seek these imbalances and orient yourself in the direction that you want to uh, uh, cultivate balance in yourself, in your relationships or the material world around you, in your communications, um, 
in your home, in your creative art or sex life, in your day-to-day -day routine, I'm going through the houses, in your close personal relationships, your you know intimate partnerships, in uh, your contracts, uh, what you're merging with, what you're, uh, um, what you're dissolving into, what you're getting lost in, um, what you're learning, what 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 you're what 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 you're cultivating in your higher mind, uh, what you're trying to accomplish in the world, tenth house, mm. uh, what you're trying to uh, 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 change or activate or understand or clarify in society as a whole, or what you are subsumed in, or your unconscious, your healing practice. So that was just a quick run through all 12 houses but the idea is like you could either find out where libra is in your chart and really focus in on there or i just love some of these prompts of like where do i feel out of whack and how can i intend to bring balance into that area um orient yourself accordingly and then Mars will give you a lot of fire and a lot of energy to, to direct in, in that direction of cultivating, creating that balance and harmony. Um, yes, that's the question for you to ask with this Mars conjunct the new moon in Libra. How can I intentionally direct my energy into cultivating balance in my life and the world around me? Snatched. Um, Mercury is in retrograde motion until October 20th. And then it stays in Libra until November 5th. So Mercury, planet of the mind, thought, thinking, uh, going backwards through Libra, asking us to sort of plumb our inner life and outer world for these places that are imbalanced or out of whack. And Mercury retrograde seems like it's fucking your life up, but it's really just trying to get you to see where these imbalances are. So you know, if, if you, if an email gets sent incorrectly and you're deeply triggered and you lose your mind, you know, is the imbalance in your communication style or in how you deal with miscommunication, you know, so whatever snafus happen, whatever problems pop off, uh, you know, during Mercury retrograde, delayed travel, you know, miscommunication, especially in the digital planes, um, just remember that that stuff is part of the Mercury retrograde pointing your attention towards new moon intentions and that Mars energy. So the retrograde is trying to show you and give you an understanding of what needs balance in your life. So again, you could be a nerd and go into your houses and figure out what's the area of my life that's getting this revamp and this sort of, um, yeah, I guess kind of like a remodel, you know, but, but it's not really a remodel of the bones. It's more so like um, a redecorating not a remodel it's a redecorating of that area of your life to you know deal with the things that are uncomfortable and in order to make room for the things that are in balance and luxurious and harmonious and delightful um yes so uh beautiful questions for this what is going wrong how am i being challenged and asked to re-examine or reconsider my intentions around accomplishment, ambition, and how I use my energy. So in this case, we're talking about the Mercury retrograde, getting you to really ask, is my energy going in the direction of creating more harmony and beauty and diplomacy in the world or not? You know, it feels great to fly off the handle with Mars energy and blah, lose it. Messy, necessary. It's messy. Is it necessary? No, not really. Libra gets us to think about how our actions affect other people, not just the world at large, not the world at large, but specifically others. And that's why it's, you know, the sign of justice and diplomacy, because you consider others' actions or you consider others, um, uh, uh, the, the effects that your actions have on others. And uh, you can think about that Libra air sign before you act Mars fire sign. And hopefully, act with the intention to create harmony and beauty and diplomacy and benevolence as opposed to injustice ugliness separation chaos nastiness last alignment for you is venus entering sagittarius on october 7th day after the new moon we're reading this as venus moving through the scorpio part of our chart so kind of getting at whatever's deeply buried or um sort of 
in obscured or in shadow that has a lot of power and we were we've been reading venus and scorpio as like the transit of venus through scorpio magnetizing and drawing to it resources that we need but not necessarily to accomplish you know something in the world that's easy peasy but resources that reveal our actual intentions right um resources that so it's it's like venus is very attractive magnetic so if your intention is to conquer the world right uh, aggressively uh venus in scorpio is either gonna like bring your arsenal to you or attract to you the people places and things the resources that will help you to manifest your intention but also reveal to you whether that intention is in alignment or balanced or fair or not you see so it's like okay i want to conquer the world now suddenly i have my arsenal and my army around me but everybody's out to get me and i might be dead before i conquer the world because i'm saying the venus and scorpio in this case would be revealing like a deeply imperialistic colonial you know oppressive violent imbalanced worldview unilateral top down i'm the conqueror kind of vibe and venus and scorpio would say you want that here you go take all of these things and let's see what you do with them you know will you have a, a flash of conscience or a change of heart and but again it's impersonal because venus just magnetizes whatever's in your deepest darkest depths if you've done a lot of shadow work maybe there's not a lot of nastiness to attract you know nasty resources to attract because what's in the shadow is is actually just what's ruining your life not necessarily what's ruining everybody else's life you know so it's that deeper psychological work but if you are, are living an unexamined life venus is going to attract exactly what you're vibrating to you and then that mars energy will be like what are you going to do about it when you pull the trigger with that mars energy um you know all of this gets recycled through the lens of mercury retrograde and the new moon in libra saying okay cool this is what you've attracted now you're using it is this fair is this balanced is this good we've been talking a lot about it lately like who really needs to be a billionaire why why do we need it there's plenty there's enough you know so go off sis get yours get what you want you have free will but you know how's it working for you right and is it fair is what this new moon wants us to really ask is it balanced is it beautiful is it harmonious or is it fucking lopsided point is on october 7th venus moves from scorpio into sagittarius so all of a sudden it's like we stop magnetizing the unconscious and we start magnetizing the superconscious we start attracting ideals so it's almost like venus and scorpio says hey this is what's inside of you this is what you're vibrating you know when it moves into sagittarius it goes is this the highest possible vision so it's even a little more extreme than balance it's like can you do better than this is this what you really want or do you have a bigger ask you know like if you're content <clears throat> with you know three crusts of bread fine but if you want like a loaf you gotta ask for a loaf you got to imagine more than three crusts that's the effect of sagittarius so we're encouraging you because of the mercury retrograde and because of the libra stuff to use this venus transit <clears throat> objectively and ask yourself what am i attracting right what came to me out of the dark and what's coming down to me now from the light right what what motivations were revealed with venus and scorpio and what aspirations are being revealed from venus and sagittarius based on what's coming to me based on the tools and resources so it's like if if venus and sagittarius you know attract a a, a you know an ice pick to you you know maybe it's maybe it's your higher self telling you you need to climb a fucking mountain somewhere cold do you see what i'm saying so so we're, we're encouraging you to use the mercury retrograde and all of this libra mojo to apply this question of is this beautiful is this balanced is this fair um to what's come to you out of scorpio and what's coming to you out of sagittarius do you see okay <clears throat> 
At the end of the day, this is all about learning from Libra and applying values, your values of what is just and what is fair to the world around you and to the actions you're going to take during this next Libra cycle. Become obsessed with fairness. Seek justice and injustice, balance and imbalance everywhere you turn. Think about how can this Mars energy be channeled and directed into these various avenues. Think, because it's air element. Um, try not to get too heady about it, but it's going to be very heady. Brrr, talky, talky. Balance that out with Earth. Balance that out with <clears throat> physical practices, um, staying grounded, and, you know, applying practicality to these highest aspirations. It's like, you got to let the Sagittarius take you to the biggest dreams of, of what you could do or create or, or who you are. And then use that earthiness to be like, okay, based on that, what am I going to do about this now? Or what's the next step? What's the next right loving action to take? Or um, what are my intentions now to create um, uh, 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 about what I want to create? Anything else? Um, we're talking like for colors, indigo, lime green, um, sounds. We, a big, windy, reedy whistles. Um, this is like a moment where we feel this is a moment for a uh, Tuvan throat singing um, from the steppes of Mongolia and the plains and such. Like um, very airy, whistly uh, uh, harmonics, right? If you've never heard it, check it out. Tuvan throat singing, T-U-V-A-N. So cool. Um, practices. Think, ponder, meditate, stay light, keep moving. And do what you can to leave your path a better place than you found it. Okay? Stay light, bright, keep moving, and do what you can to leave your path a better place than you found it based on your highest visions of values, justice, worth, meaning. All very Libran, Venusian stuff. Thank you for joining us for this New Moon Transmission. Uh, should you desire a reading from Edible Spirit, the books are open. Visit ediblespirit.com. Uh, we are also teaching classes uh, in person. I'm not sorry, not, not teaching classes in person yet. We're teaching classes publicly, uh, open classes. We just closed registration for Aura Reading for Self Care and Social Justice, but keep an eye out. There'll be another cohort of that down the line. But we do do private classes for you and your crew. Uh, you can email us, DM us, whatever, uh, if you want to do a little group class or a group or a pick sitting or if you just want an individual reading healing divination session everything's up at ediblespirit.com uh, you are most most welcome into this heart and this soul and this practice we are here for you we do all of this for you uh, we can't help ourselves because we love you <laughs> because you are very 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 delicious thank you thank you thank you we'll see you next time